Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the Word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Now, we want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you are a truth seeker, if you love truth, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips. We let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into our message on this day. Hebrew Israelites are on point when it comes to exposing the Christian church. They expose the pagan practices and holidays of the Christian church, such as Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, Halloween, Mardi Gras, Carnival, etc. The Hebrew Israelites are on point in exposing the occult origins of Freemasons, Eastern stars, and other secret societies. The Hebrew Israelites are on point on addressing the pagan origins of Greek fraternities and sororities. They are on point in exposing the numerous pagan symbols, customs, traditions, and practices of Christianity. The Hebrew Israelites are right about the pagan origins of the generic and artificial names and titles, Jesus, Christ, Jehovah, Lord, and God. They are right when they address the origins of Christianity, that it was created and invented by Europeans, and that it is a Eurocentric religion. The Hebrew Israelites do a marvelous job exposing the whitewashing of the Bible and many other things. However, there are numerous of things where the Hebrew Israelites are off in their teachings. In this video, I want to address several of these false teachings, ladies and gentlemen, of the Hebrew Israelites. Number one, the Hebrew Israelites permit their women to preach and teach the word of Yahweh. Their women teach in their congregations and teach on social media platforms. This, ladies and gentlemen, goes against the scriptures. Listen, what this Hebrew wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Apostle Paul was a Hebrew. Now listen to what this Hebrew wrote. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Hebrew Israelite camps are no different than the Christian church. The Christian church have embraced women ministers. Hebrew Israelites cannot condemn the Christian church because they also go against uh, biblical doctrines. Uh, Matthew 7 verse, verses 3 through 5, the Messiah declared, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thy see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So the Hebrew Israelites are trying to get the moat out of the Christian, out of the Christian's eyes, but they got a big beam in their own eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. They, they must first get the beam out of their eye that they can see clearly to get the particles, ladies and gentlemen, the moat out of the Christian's eyes. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 through 35 declares, Let your women keep silence in the assemblies. 
for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the assembly. This applies to the Hebrew Israelites too, ladies and gentlemen. The majority of Hebrew Israelite camps don't follow this doctrine. Their women are out of order and domineering. Very dominant women, ladies and gentlemen. This Hebrew Apostle Paul wrote in verse 37, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of Yahweh. Note, Apostle Paul said here, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of Yahweh. The Bible teaches that aged women can teach other women, but not men. And the scriptures gives us a list of things that aged women should teach. Titus chapter 2 verses 3 through 5 declares the aged women likewise that they be and behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Elohim be not blasphemed. Ladies and gentlemen, these Hebrew Israelite women need to leave the teaching and preaching of the word of Yahweh to the man. Ladies and gentlemen, they are out of order. Yahweh has a divine order. The head of the Messiah is Elohim. The head of man is the Messiah and the head of the woman is the man. So Yahweh has a divine order. Ladies and gentlemen, woman need to stay in her place and the man needs to stay in his place. So Yahweh never called a woman, a man in the ministry to preach, ladies and gentlemen, or teach in the assembly. He never called. It's not scripture. You cannot find it, ladies and gentlemen. Numbers chapter two. Uh, well, number two, rather. Number two, Hebrew Israelites camps permit their men to wear long hair with dreads, braids, plaits, twists, etc. Remember, Apostle Paul was a Hebrew and he wrote in 1 Corinthians 11 and 14, Do it not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Hebrew Israelites are no different from Christians. Both of their men wear long hair, dreads, braids, plaits, twists, etc. Many Hebrew Israelite men wear shoulder length and longer than that, ladies and gentlemen. From behind, amen, looking at these Hebrew Israelite men from behind, you cannot distinguish them from women. By the way, the Messiah did not wear long hair. Yahushua did not wear long hair. Like most paintings, portraits, and statues depict him. Yahushua was not a Nazarite, but a Nazarene. He was from the town of Nazareth. The Messiah did not have a Nazarite vow. In fact, Nazarite vows have discontinued in this new covenant dispensation. Number three, both Hebrew Israelites and Christian women wear makeup and jewelry, which now it is forbidden for women to wear such. First Timothy 2 and verse 9, Apostle Paul wrote, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or goals or pearls or costly array. Even women are supposed to wear braided hair, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because the origins of braided hair, hair comes from prostitutes, amen, whores, 
were, wore braided hair in ancient time to distinguish them from other women, to let men know that they were for sale, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Shamefacedness means bashful and modesty. How can a woman be shamefacedness with makeup and lipstick? Now, Azizel is one of the leaders of the rebellious watchers or the fallen angels in the time preceding the flood. He taught men the art of warfare, of making swords, knives, shields, and coats of mail, and taught women the art of deception by ornamenting the body, dyeing the hair, and painting the face and the eyebrows and also reveal to the people the secrets of witchcraft. This information can be found in the book of Enoch. Even women arching their eyes. Women should not arch their eyebrows, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a pagan custom. They did this a man, the pagans did this at funerals when they buried the dead. So you see Hebrew Israelite women also like Christian women arching their eyebrows. You shouldn't pluck your eyebrows. That is a pagan custom. Glory to Yahweh. In 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 30, we read about the wicked woman Jezebel. When she saw Jehu coming towards the city, she painted her face and attire her hair to attract and seduce him. Jehu called her a cursed woman and commanded her to be cast out upon the street where the dogs ate her flesh, that there would be no remembrance of her, a king's daughter. Second Kings chapter nine, verse 30 declares, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face and tied her head and looked out a window. In ancient time, a man unholy and immoral women painted their faces to seduce men. Jeremiah 4 and 30 declares, And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. Yahweh here compares backslidden Judah with a fallen woman who tries to enhance her outward appearance with paint and ornaments and the Most High said it was all in vain. This is why Apostle Paul wrote, ladies and gentlemen, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Now, Apostle Paul was a Hebrew. He wrote in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Apparel that's not revealing, apparel that's not enticing, seductive, and provocative, like uh, many Hebrew Israelite women wear today and, and the majority of Christian women wear, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen for the truth. Ezekiel 23 verses 40 through 41 declares, And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far unto whom a messenger was sent, lo, they came for whom thou didst wash thyself, <coughs> excuse me, 
paintest thy eyes and deckest thyself with ornaments and settest upon a stately bed and a stable prepared before it. Whereupon thou hast set mine incense and my oil. She sat on the bed waiting for her lovers, ladies and gentlemen, to entertain her lovers. Verses 43 through 44. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Yet they went in unto her <clears throat> as they go in unto a woman that plays the harlot. So went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholaba, the lewd woman. <clears throat> this is a most shocking passage. In each of the passages, ladies and gentlemen, we see that painting or putting on makeup in our modern term was linked with wicked women who use face paintings to seduce or attract others and at times use paintings to lure men into sins of sexual immorality. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Did you hear that? This is a most shocking passage. In each of the passages, we read in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Now here in Ezekiel 23, verses 40 through 44. Ladies and gentlemen, in each of these passages, face painting or putting on makeup in our modern term was linked with wicked women who use face paintings to seduce or attract others and at times used to lure men into the sins of sexual immorality. According to the Westminster Dictionary of the Bible, the wicked women of the East stained their eyelids with black powder made of pulverized antimony mixed with oil and applied with a brush. The Hebrews regarded this practice as unworthy of a woman of high moral character and standard. Painting of the face in America started in Hollywood a place of debauchery and adulterous women. And the popular belief seems to be that Hollywood sets the style, fashion, and standard for a nation of women. The painted face has never in all of history stood for holiness and purity but it has always been a mark of the world and whorish women. Number four, Hebrew Israelites do not teach biblical salvation. John chapter three, verses five through six, the Messiah, who was a Hebrew Israelite, by the way, Declared, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim. <clears throat> Excuse me. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. The Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, is talking to Nicodemus, a Hebrew, here. Yahoshua is talking about water baptism in the name of Yahoshua Mashiach and the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Mark chapter 16 verses 15 through 16 declares, and he said unto them, <clears throat> go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Note here. Yahoshua told his Hebrew apostles, 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <clears throat> that means Gentiles too. He said every creature. And we know the Hebrew Israelites today only concentrate on people who they believe are descendants of ancient Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The Hebrew Israelites don't follow this command. They don't teach water baptism as a part of biblical salvation. <clears throat> One cannot be saved without being baptized in water in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. One cannot enter New Jerusalem, amen, if they have not been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. This is what Yahushua is saying. In 1 Peter 3 and 21, Apostle Peter, this Hebrew, wrote the light figure whereunto even baptism doeth also now save us. You see that? Baptism does also now save us. Remember, Yahushua said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, because you stop drinking, you stop fornicating, committing adultery, uh, uh, getting high, a, a smoking cigarettes, amen, putting away the filth of the flesh. That doesn't save you alone. The Bible tells us in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, amen. Um, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen. So in first Peter three and 21, apostle Peter, this Hebrew wrote that light figure whereunto even baptism do us also now save us. You see that? You cannot be saved if you have not been born again of the water and of the spirit. And that's water baptism in the name of Yahushua Mashiach and the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongue. <clears throat> not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an ounce of a good conscience toward Elohim by the resurrection of Yahushua Mashiach. Acts 2 and 37 through verse 39. The Bible says, they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then the Bible says in Acts 2 and 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahushua Mashiach for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as Yahweh Elohim shall come. The Hebrew Israelites, <clears throat> they expose, ladies and gentlemen, the paganism of Christianity. They expose, ladies and gentlemen, the generic names and titles, uh, Jesus, uh, Jehovah, Lord, and God. Uh, the Jeho um, the uh, Hebrew Israelites, <clears throat> they, ladies and gentlemen, teach many true things. They talk about the whitewashing of the Bible, how they depict the biblical characters as white people. And they, they do speak many truths. But, ladies and gentlemen, they are off and numerous. Amen. And many of their teachings. <clears throat> they are off. Glory to Yahweh. Now, Peter told the people, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahushua Mashiach for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who was Peter addressing? Peter was addressing a Hebrew audience. 
Why don't Hebrew Israelites follow the teachings of the apostles? The apostles were Hebrews. Why don't the Hebrew Israelites follow the teachings of the apostles? Ephesians 2 and 20, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and Yahushua Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. Acts 2 and 42, and they continue steadfastly and the apostles' doctrine breaking of bread and fellowship and in prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, Yahushua being a Hebrew himself, prayed in the book of John chapter 17, his high priestly prayer, ladies and gentlemen. He prayed, <clears throat> Father, I pray that you take them not out of this world. He said, sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. He said, neither do I pray for these alone, but them that will believe on me through their word. Their word was the apostles. By the way, they were Hebrews. Why don't the Hebrew Israelites teach what the primitive first century apostles taught. They are in gross error. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse 2, Apostle Paul wrote to uh, Timothy, his son, he said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap after their own lust, teachers having itching ears and will turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Today, ladies and gentlemen, people love fables. <clears throat> they hate the truth, but they love fables. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7, the Bible tells us Paul seen some of John the Baptist's disciples. And he said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? They say, we haven't heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. And Paul said, where were you baptized? They said, we was baptized unto John's baptism. Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on, on him that should come after him, that is Mashiach Yahushua. The Bible said when they heard this, they were baptized over, rebaptized in the name of the master Yahushua Mashiach. And the scriptures say when Paul laid hands on them, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were born of the water and of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible said it was about 12 men. And they were John the Baptist disciples. And guess what? Paul was addressing 12 men which were Hebrews. This was Hebrews. Why don't the Hebrew Israelites teach this truth? Number five, polygamy. The Hebrew Israelites teach that you can have, you can marry more than one woman at the same time. Some have three, four, five wives. There's one guy in Tennessee, um, Dow, Charles Dow, he got five wives, <laughs> lived with five women. You know he on his way to hell. You know he going to bust hell wide open. Glory to Yahweh. The Bible says, now he's supposed to be a pastor, a leader of a flock. The scripture says that a bishop should be the husband of one wife. One wife. One wife. He's disqualified from being a bishop, ladies and gentlemen. And he take the scripture and he twists them, ladies and gentlemen, to justify his lust. You know, these whoremongers, they love that. They, they love teaching polygamy because they whoremongers, they whores. And they just want these young women. Man, he married, and his women, his wives getting younger and younger. 
They're getting young and young. He's a whore. That's all he is. And he's fulfilling his lust, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why he teaches polygamy, because he's a whore. So he tried to justify being a whoremonger. Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, and verse 4, that marriage is honorable in all, in the bed, under fire, but whoremongers and adulterers, Yahweh shall judge. You know, in the old covenant, Yahweh permitted polygamy, <clears throat> but Yahweh had problems with it. He found fault with it. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, he established a new covenant. He found fault with it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read this to you in the book of Hebrews chapter 8. He found fault with that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share some faults with him. Before I read, I want to say this. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Look what those women was used to do. Look at those women turned his heart from Yahweh to serve their gods. And he built shrines and temples to their gods right there in the land of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. They turned his heart. David, ladies and gentlemen, look at the rivalry between David's sons from different women. Huh? Was it Amnon slew his own brother? Ladies and gentlemen, slew his own brother. Then you look at Jacob with Leah and Rachel. Look at how they fought and contend with one another, ladies and gentlemen. The envy, the jealousy uh, between those two women. Glory to Yahweh. I mean, it was a mess. Polygamy. Yahweh found fault with it. Look at Joseph. <clears throat> Joseph was born of Rachel and his other brothers hated him. Ladies and look at the rivalry, the com competition between them. Look what polygamy brought. Ladies and gentlemen. And so Yahweh found fault. And we see in the scripture, <coughs> polygamy came from Cain's descendant. From Cain's descendant. Yahweh permitted it. But now we, in the new covenant, <coughs> Yahweh required more, more perfection from us. He required more from us. In the old covenant, you can fulfill the lust of your flesh. They fulfill the lust of their flesh. All they had to do is keep the commandments, but they fulfilled the lust of their flesh, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh allowed it. But here in the book of Hebrews, let me show you something. Yahweh done away with that. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, it says, But now have he attained a more excellent ministry, Yahushua, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Y'all, we're in a better covenant now. We're not under the first covenant, we're in a better covenant, which was established upon what? Better promises. Now look at verse 7. <clears throat> For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. See, there was faults with it. And polygamy is one, one of, of the faults of the first covenant, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh abolished that. He done away with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't go out and marry a man, no uh, several women because you want to marry women. Yeah, that, now, now li listen, Yahweh had one wife, and that was Israel, ladies and gentlemen. He had one wife, wife, and that was Israel. And he divorced Israel. The scripture said he gave a bill of divorcement. Divorce. Then, ladies and gentlemen, he turned to the Gentiles. Glory to Yahweh. But he had one wife. He didn't have two wives at the same time. Glory to Yahweh. <clears throat> and so polygamy is of the devil. That is, that you want to you wanna see a scripture that defines polygamy? 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Ladies and gentlemen, this is wicked. It's wicked for a man to be married, a man with several women, more than one woman at one given time. That is wicked, ladies and gentlemen. Now you got this Charles Dow guy, uh, building, uh, somebody said it was, a, what, a 12,000 square 
foot home with an elevator in it. I think it's twelve or thirteen thousand square feet. He got a house all them women he got. And after a while, all them people going to leave him because many people leaving them, many leaving them. After a while, who going to take care of all them women? Ain't them people ain't going to be sending them no more money. And he ain't going to be able to take care of all them women he got, ladies and gentlemen. And you can see that those women, right now, you can see the contention between them. You, if you got discernment, you can see it. I've seen it with his wives. They don't like one another, ladies and gentlemen. They don't like one another. You can see it. You cut it with a with a knife, ladies and gentlemen. So thick, ladies and gentlemen. The the contention there. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen. For the truth. Okay. We're gonna close here. Number six. Foul language. Foul language. They use profanity. Oh, they say MF. These Hebrew Israelite camps call one another MLs and SOBs. And they use the, the S word and A word. I mean, they just cuss like sellers. Just foul mouth, gulp mouth individual. <clears throat> and they don't see any wrong with it, ladies and gentlemen. They don't see any wrong with it. They speak, talk any kind of way. I mean, it is terrible. The language, the verbiage that proceeds out of these people mouth. Obscene language. Graphic. I mean, vile, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me read this to you as we close this message. In the book of Ephesians. You know something's wrong with that picture, ladies and gentlemen. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 9. It said, let no corrupt communication proceed us out of your mouth. Profanity is corrupt, ladies and gentlemen. But that which is good to use of edifying. Now, when you say SOB, you call somebody a MF. You're calling women B's. All the other use, all these other words that they use. Now, is that edifying? And they try to justify using profanity. Look at this. That it may minister grace unto the hearer. Those words do not minister grace to the hearers, ladies and gentlemen. These people are deceived. I, I've told you the Hebrew Israelites, they teach a lot of truth. But they are in gross error also. Ladies and gentlemen, they are in gross error. They're not preaching the true gospel. They're not preaching it, ladies and gentlemen. They form their own ideology, philosophy, um, their own religion, ladies and gentlemen, that is not biblical sound. It's not scripture. Now, the apostles were Hebrew Israelites. Yahoshua was a Hebrew. They don't even follow their instruction. Paul, they, they reject Paul some, many of them. Say Paul was an heretic. Paul was a false prophet, a deceiver, an imposter, ladies and gentlemen. Paul was a Hebrew Israelite. He said it. He gave his pedigree. He gave his credentials, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the name of Yahweh. But the Bible tells us, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearer. And then I'm going to close here in 1 Peter. Thank you for your patience. 1 Peter. Amen. Chapter number 1. And I want to draw your attention to verse 15. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All manner of conversation. Your behavior, your conduct, your verbish, ladies and gentlemen, your verbal communication got to be holy because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. You think Yahweh used profanity, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, the scripture uses the word damn, but it's not out of context. 
Paul said, though we an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, let them be a curse. Glory to Yahweh. Uh, the Bible speaks here in 2 Peter. It uses the word damn in the scripture that people will be damned, but people take it out of context. Here in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, it says, verse 1, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the master that bought them and bring upon them self swift destruction. Well, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. We would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Bless Yahweh. Also, send your comments. We'd like to hear your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate for all of you to send those inspiring and encouraging uh, words those comments that you sent, we we'll appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. It just let us know that you are being blessed by this broadcast. And amen, Yahweh is in edifying you. And we just like to hear from, just like to hear from my friends. Some people never write comment. Some of you have been listening to us, amen, for months. You haven't wrote a comment yet. Drop a line or two. Just let us know that you're listening. Amen. And you are enjoying this broadcast. Also, you can email us at any time, ladies and gentlemen. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shalom.